What is up everybody, it's Stas here and in this video, just like always, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November, creeping up to the middle of the month of November in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, yes, we're going to be talking about you guys yet again. Again, and whether or not I think this is a bottom for the ETN and a couple of other stocks, two in particular, that I see a lot of potential in right now in the stock market. So stay tuned in a couple of minutes. We'll go over that. But before we do get started, all I ask from you is if you enjoy the video, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me. And if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community, the Discord group chats down below as well as the Facebook group. So with that further ado, with about 15 to 17 minutes left in the market, let's talk about what is going on here with the SPX, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. company. So looking at this five-day, five-minute, guys, what did we do? We hit another all-time high today at $3,102, um, $3,102.61. And look at that crazy move that we had this morning, guys. Um, we woke up, uh, or it really opened up, rather, not woke up, we woke up to the morning to the stock market opening up, up about a couple of points, and then we saw that massive rally of 14 points from 3088 where we opened up at, up to about 3102, then we started to fall uh, from there pretty much um, starting a downtrend at that all-time high, and if we go back to that 5-day, five 5 minute, we can actually see that if the S&P holds these levels, that that's going to be a pretty bullish close um, on the S&P at this higher low as indicated by this trend line. And that's if it holds this close, um, this little upswing that we're seeing here in the next 15 minutes, which I personally think it should, right? If it closes like this, that's a very good sign that we could be heading up even further tomorrow, right? So going to that, let's say 20 day chart, we can see, you know, higher low on the 50 SMA here, which is a very important technical spot um, that we've been watching on this channel and of course we're running up here um, which is a good continuation sign that we may be pushing up tomorrow as well and of course what am I looking at in terms of the morning you know before trading I'm looking at the futures guys because this can show us where the market is headed based on what the futures are looking like right if we wake up tomorrow the futures are very green that could be um, a sign that these markets are going to continue to rally and maybe even hit an all-time high again, right? So the S&P, um, that's what it's looking like right now, up about three bucks, um, flat on the day really because it did see that dump off, but good sign is that we hit an all-time high and we're holding those main moving averages. So let's go to the Dow Jones, guys, just like the S&P, pretty flat, but technicals are looking good. Down about 16 points right now, down about 0.06%, and just just like the S&P guys, we're holding that 50 SMA, which is this green line on the hourly chart at a higher low, which is a really good sign for the bulls out there. One sign that's a bit alarming is, um, you know, we, we actually did not hit an all-time high today. Honestly, guys, despite that little run-up this morning, if we look on the one-day, one chart, you can see it, uh, one-day, one-minute chart, you know, we ran up. We did not hit an all-time high, and this is looking like um, a potential double double top as well. So we're in a predicament right now where this is a bearish move being the double top, but the fact that we're holding the 50 SMA at a higher low, that's a bullish move. So we really need to see what it ends up doing tomorrow. Let's say we break the double top to the upside, hit an all-time high. Obviously, that's very bullish. But let's say tomorrow we see a dump off below that 50 SMA especially, that's going to be bearish. We may be seeing more red if that does end up happening. So let's go to the NASDAQ guys up $16 right now. This is doing the best out of the three major indexes that we track on this channel up 
percent. And on the hourly chart, just like the S&P, the Dow Jones guys, we are holding that green 50 SMA at a high or low, and we're confirming the bounce there on a nice little close here on the one day, one minute that we're seeing. Um, if it does end up closing here, which again I think it will. So this is looking very bullish. If we look on the five day, five minute, you know you can see it as well. Let's take a look. If I draw this trend line out, we're holding higher highs, higher lows, all of that good stuff. And yes, we hit an all time high today at 8,300 here on the NASDAQ futures at about 11, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's looking really good in my opinion for the bulls out there. Um, you know, watch this 180 SMA. It seems like it's struggling right now there on this five day, five minute chart. If it breaks out of there, I think it'll hit um, potentially another all time high here in these next couple of days. So so that's really all I have to say right now, um, you know, on these markets. The Dow, watch that double top. If it breaks out of there, that's bullish. The S&P is looking very bullish since it did hit an all-time high again today, like I mentioned. And the Nasdaq's looking bullish as well. But watch that double top on the Dow, guys. That's actually interesting, um, the way that is forming. So pretty much guys that's it for the market analysis let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts trump actually spoke today i watched most of the speech, I actually couldn't watch the Q&A portion um, of it, and he was talking a lot about the China trade situation, saying that there is a deal coming in the near future. Of course, he didn't obviously say um, you know, when he thinks a deal will be done, but he did say trade talks are going well. He, he pretty much indicated to that, and uh, the markets seem to have all of that priced in already, in my opinion, which is why we didn't see um, a massive move to the upside after that. So it's it's interesting to see, guys. That's obviously something I'm watching closely as that is probably the biggest um, impacting factor on the market, either to the upside or the downside. So watch the trade war, of course. Keep an eye on all that good stuff, company earnings, the way individual stocks are moving. That's going to show you um, and really give you indication on what to do in terms of you know short, long, what stocks to play, and so forth. So what did I end up doing today, guys? The funny thing is is I didn't really do much today again, just like I did yesterday. It's been a pretty um, slow start, uh, you know, in my stock market accounts here, especially my trading accounts. And the truth is, I feel like I'm in, I'm in a lot of swing trades right now. This is probably why um, I didn't really see any day trading opportunities today. You know, of course, you saw in the title, you guys didn't find a bottom. You know, I'm kind of waiting to see how that fiddles out before day trading it. So I haven't really done anything there. Haven't really been touching these market ETFs really at all recently. So I figured, let me take a look at my swings. Let me focus on my swings. And the truth is I'm in Facebook. I'm in McDonald's right now. I'm in PayPal. And I initiated another position today in a swing, which we're going to talk about right now. And that's actually one of the two stocks I mentioned in the beginning of this video that I see a ton of potential in. Um, and it's Chipotle Mexican Grill, guys. And I'm not, and I'm trying to remember, am I missing any of the swings that I'm currently in right now from this video? I forget off the top of my head, but I'm definitely in at least four swings right now, um, being McDonald's, Chipotle. Um, PayPal and uh, Facebook, and I might be missing one, um, but yeah, definitely four swings. And Chipotle is one that I'm seeing uh, uh, looking l looking like a very attractive opportunity here on a technical basis, right? So we hit that all-time high at 860. We had a bunch of trouble at that 850, 860 area from the September um, to the October month, right? We actually topped there four different times, one, two, three, four. Then ultimately, we reported earnings which I have here, the earnings were pretty good. So they were $3.82 of EPS versus $3.22. But the revenue was in line with expectations at $1.4 billion. And the truth is, guys, I was looking into it, and I'm not too sure why Chipotle stock has fallen aggressively since that earnings report. Because based on those brief numbers, EPS and Rev, you know, revenue didn't beat, which is... 
I guess it's not an amazing sign, but it came in line with expectations. EPS beat, so I'm looking at that and I'm saying that's a pretty decent um, earnings report based on the basic metrics. And there's probably just something, honestly, that I'm missing uh, that, that that did drive this stock down. But the fact that it seems like we found a bottom here um, at about 726, which was an old resistance back um, in the April to about the June months of 2019, the fact that we held that as a support, we're running up here, that in my opinion is a very key technical move that we may be pushing higher here. And I was reading in the news, their carne asada, they're uh, expecting to, um, I think, hold that on the menu up until 2020, uh, it's September 2020, if I'm not mistaken. That's a pretty good sign, right? That's a pretty good sign. And I actually tried the carne asada, I believe it was like a, a week or two ago. And let me tell you guys, that stuff is amazing. The general steak, the regular steak, I think it's it's not even comparable to this carne asada stuff. So if you haven't tried it out, go try it out. I definitely recommend it. And I was honestly impressed with how good it really was. I don't know if it's my specific location, whatever it may be, but... I was really impressed, guys. So Chipotle, um, you know, it's running up on that news today, I believe, up 15 points, up about 2%. But the truth is, I ended up getting in uh, on this little uh, dip down to about uh, 5, I think it was like 7.57 this morning. And you guys may be saying, you know, or not 7.57 um, in the morning, at the price of 7.57 this morning, right? So I know you guys may be saying, oh man, you got, you got in a bit too late on this, but this massive gap up, I believe, and the way that it's closing here, holding 755 as strong as it is, you know, this is looking extremely bullish in my opinion, right? Very, very bullish. If we're looking at the five-day, five-minute chart um, alone, you know, these moving averages, they've been resistance levels, and again, the fact that we're popping out aggressively, that's a good sign. Going to the hourly chart, you guys can see a lot of the same. You know, that 50 SMA was a resistance on this hourly chart. Now we're breaking out, which is why I initiated that first position. And of course, like I always mention on the channel, when I'm swinging, I'm not buying in all, you know, 100% of my stake position at once. I'm getting in at 10, 20, 30%, whatever it may be, depending on the swing. And then I'm adding more as the pattern confirms itself. So you guys could probably guess it when I want to add more money or what's the sign that uh, uh, it's going to, if it happens, you know, I'm going to add more money. Well, that's going to be if we break this 180 SMA on this hourly chart. I think I already... Uh, uh, yeah, I already placed a buy order at 785. Um, a limit, uh, limit buy here. You know, if it pops, breaks, that's where I'm looking to add more money as of right now. And honestly, the sell target is going to be uh, 830 initially. Then, of course, after that, probably around 860. And another thing I love about Chipotle, guys, is this stock has been upgraded, I believe, by a bunch of analysts. And analysts in general still have their targets up in the $900 level. So overall, I just think this is a, an overall dip in Chipotle, and, I, and I'm taking advantage of it. Um, um, and even on this hourly or this year day chart, you can see we held that 180 SMA support. That's a very good sign as well. So overall, this is a dip buy in my personal um, opinion. So in terms of trading, guys, that's all I'm doing. I'm in Chipotle. I'm in PayPal. I'm in Facebook. I'm in McDonald's. And if there's any other that I'm forgetting, I'll mention it in tomorrow's video. So before we talk about some other stocks, let's get into you guys very quickly, guys, and discuss whether or not I think this is a bottom. And the truth is, it's extremely difficult to, you know, uh, guess bottoms on individual stocks, let alone leveraged ETNs, guys. So is this the bottom? Based on some price action I'm seeing right now, it's definitely possible. It's definitely possible, but again, it's insanely difficult, probably impossible, to call the bottom out a lot of the time with these, right? With these, you know, ETNs that are leveraged. But what I'm seeing that's uh, what I'm seeing that's kind of leading me to the conclusion of this being a potential bottom is the fact that we bottomed out at 15:30 on the 11th of the month which was yesterday, right? We bottomed there which is 
it's not at, at this point in time, this wasn't like, oh my goodness, this is the bottom, right? But that's the bottom for the day, right? The next day came along, which is today, we bottomed yet again at 1530, which was that bottom from yesterday. That's a sign that we're holding that level as a support. A couple of minutes ago, right before I filmed this video, probably about an hour and a half ago, actually, we bottomed yet again at 1530. So now in the next four or five minutes until the market close, um, this thing has to hold above 1530, in my opinion, um, for this to still be considered a bottom. And it seems like it's going to close above 1530. So is this a bottom temporarily? I think it is, right? I definitely think it is. And what will confirm that theory um, that this that this is a bottom? Well, tomorrow, guys, if we gap up, if we do something like this, maybe not as extreme to, uh, up until seven up to seventeen bucks, but if we break out of these moving average resistances and start to press back up into the sixteens, low sixteens, maybe mid sixteens, that, in my opinion, is going to be um, a breakout at least in the short term here for you guys and really solidifying this 1530 level as a bottom. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. Uh, on that. You know, you guys has been getting crushed. You know, we're all trying to figure out where it's going to bottom out at. And uh, that's kind of all I have to say, right? 1530, that's just a critical, critical level, guys. You know, if we get below that, that's going to be poor um, for, for the you guys traders out there. And at that point, we may have to flip our attention to DGAS, which of course is the uh, inverse to you guys, and these both trade on natural gas for those of you guys that don't know, right? Natural gas, you know, whenever this thing is, is going up, you guys is going up in price, right? Whenever natural gas is going down, DGAS is going up in price. So on the hourly chart, we clearly see natural gas is downtrending, right? You know, we're seeing a bearish cross, the 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA here. You know, these moving averages, they're acting as resistance level. So ideally now a point that I'm looking at in natural gas is 260. And ideally we're going to hold that level and break out of the moving averages. That is what the you guys, uh, you know, uh, side of the team wants to see, right? Because that will be extremely bullish if we do something like this. So overall, those are my thoughts, right? I'm watching natural gas, you guys, D gas, of course, like I do every day, but I'm not actively trading these until they kind of um, wiggle out. Out. I'm kind of hoping that you guys um, gaps up this week after their report, and that's going to offer um, a massive move, um, you know, uh, in terms of you guys. And of course, if natural gas does see that massive pop after the report. So a couple of other stocks that I want to talk about, um, one being Ulta, guys. Ulta right here, it's kind of in a situation where it's been crushed over the past couple of months from 368 down to 224. It's found this bottom over the the past couple of months, and now we're finally starting to break out of moving averages. So this is a stock that had an earnings report that was EPS of 276 versus 280 expected. They missed on EPS, right? Revenue came in at 1.67 billion versus 1.68 billion. They missed on revenue and they got uh, their guidance lowered. So this completely destroyed the stock. It lost, let's see, from 224, uh, you know, from 368 to 224. That was a loss of about 40%. And again, you guys can see we've been holding that level for the past couple of months. This move happened uh, at the end of August. And since September, guys, what's that? September, October, two months, two and a half months at this point, it's been holding that level and increasing in price. So this is looking like it's breaking out, you know, moving averages, the whole nine yards. And uh, if we go to the hourly chart, you guys can see it even better, right? We, we tested that support again um, around 230. Now we're climbing up to 250, um, 243. So what am I looking for in particular before initiating a position here? Ultimately, guys, um, maybe not 245. Actually, yeah, I need to see a break at least above 245 um, before initiating my first position. So I'm going to set an alert here on um, Ulta. Probably Mark is at or above 250 bucks. 
stocks, that's where, again, I'd probably put 10, 15 to 20% of my gold position. And then as it continues to move up from there, I'll add more. Another thing to uh, keep an eye out for is their upcoming earnings report, which is in December on the 5th. If they do well, guys, this thing can maybe not fill the entire gap. That's insane, right? It's not going to go up 40%, 20% after hours. That's that's insane. It could maybe, but I doubt it, right? But let's say they have a good earnings report. It could probably go up 5 6%, maybe 7 8%, 10%. I could definitely see that happening. So Ulta is definitely one to keep an eye out for. Um, and if it goes up before earnings, you know, you build a buffer on your position, meaning you're up a couple percentage points and you want to hold through earnings you can make even more money on top of that you know if it goes well and if it goes poorly since you've built that buffer you won't lose as much money or you will probably break even or just take a small gain so that's what I'm looking at right now um, you know in terms of Ulta stock another stock that I want to talk about is going to be Facebook guys I talked to you all how I'm in Facebook right now as a swing trade and we got some amazing news that Facebook has launched a payment service called Facebook Pay that you're going to be able to use alongside of, uh, or rather, you know, in the pr platforms, uh, Facebook alongside with Instagram and alongside with, I believe, WhatsApp. So that is really, really good news. That's driving the stock up 2.56% today, uh, up five bucks. You know, we bounced at that higher low as indicated by this trend line, and we broke back into the 192s, which is a resistance, and, uh, you know, back into a new channel that we haven't been in for the past couple of days, which now gives me the reason to believe that, and honestly, I've been believing this, but now that we got the technical break, this is a, another uh, a good sign, is that we might be getting to 205 bucks now on Facebook, right? So this made me some money on my swing, but the bad thing is it took away money from my other swing, which I want to talk about now and give a technical breakdown, which is PayPal, guys. So PayPal fell on the news, um, obviously, because this, this is going going to be a competitor to Facebook Pay. So PayPal fell from 103 down to about 101. I didn't buy more shares. I'm simply holding guys because it still uh, held that overall $100 level that I needed um, for it to hold, you know, for me to hold my shares. So the fact that we're doing that now is good. And again, like I mentioned in yesterday's video, I need to see the breakout above these moving averages on the four hour chart before adding more money. And my initial sell is going to be around 110 bucks might sell 114 as well then probably sell out of my whole position at 116 that's kind of what I'm thinking right now for PayPal so other stocks, guys, marijuana stocks. I want to end off the video here um, with a couple marijuana stocks to watch out for that are reporting earnings. One of them being Tilray. They're reporting earnings literally right now, I believe. Yup, 4 p.m. Central Standard. So if we go to the one day, one minute, it's probably too early uh, to see their reaction. Yeah, it is too early. Um, but we'll see what they're doing in terms of earnings um, after hours and, of course, tomorrow morning pre-market. I'm sure they'll be going up and down like crazy. But but overall, Tilray, it's been crushed, guys. If you don't remember, this stock was once $300 per share, which... It, it, it's insanity, right? Was it 300 Am I wrong on that? Let me just double check. <laughs> yeah, it was $300 per share. That's just insane, right? We went from 20 to 300 Now we're back to 20 So I'm going to be watching Tilray. Um, this is nothing more than a day trade, in my opinion. I would never swing trade a stock like this. Uh, maybe some other marijuana stocks like Cron and CGC I would consider, but definitely not Tilray. Um, you know, Cron reported earnings today. I read briefly into it. They missed on earnings um, in terms of revenue. I forget what they did in EPS, but the stock didn't really do much today, down 25 cents, down about 3.09%. But ultimately, you can see, you know, Tilray, Cron, you'll see CGC, which is the next one. You know, these stocks have been killed over the past couple of months, right? They're losing so much of their value. You know, CGC's down 50, 60, 70%. Cron's down the same. Tilray's down like 90%, 95% from its highs. You know, these stocks are getting crushed. So they're reporting earnings. CGC is, um, you know, after the bell, 
Actually, no, on the 14th, which is in two days. So they're actually reporting before the bell, 7.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, um, in two days from now, which is the 14th of November. So really, we just kind of need to see a narrative shift on these companies here. Um, you know, positive, uh, uh, you know, earnings outlook into the next year, you know, over the next couple of months. This is something that is going to kind of shift the momentum to the upside uh, for these stocks, in my opinion. And until that happens, guys, until we see a, uh, a massive sharp pop out of these moving averages on the six month chart for all of these, you know, Tilray, um, Cron, CGC. Until we see that, I'm not really looking to play these. Um, I, I really feel more comfortable putting my money in uh, a McDonald's, let's say, for example, um, a PayPal, right? A Facebook, a CMG. These are stocks that I'm seeing um, with a lot more value right now as a swing trader, right? From a swing trader's perspective, than a CGC, a Cron, or a Tilray or honestly any other marijuana stock at that. So I'm going to end off the video here, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me. And if you want to be further connected with our community, the Strive Smart community, that Discord link is down below as well as the Facebook group. And if you want to buy some merch, that is linked down below as well. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.